This video demonstrates how to transfer data between Lumerical's electrical and optical solvers for simulating electro-optic modulators. So for electro-optic modulators, the simulation flow starts with simulating the PN junction and device. And from this, I can calculate the IV curves or uh, the carrier density distribution. So here you can see that um, as I apply uh, a larger voltage across this PN junction, I get um, an increased concentration of carriers inside the waveguide region. And this will change the refractive index in the waveguide region. And I can import this voltage-dependent uh, refractive index distribution into uh, mode solutions or FDTD solutions and calculate the optical response. So for my optical response, I can calculate the change in the uh, phase or the effective index as well as a loss as a function of applied voltage. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to transfer the data from the electrical simulation into the optical simulation. So this is a, a standard PN junction in device. Uh, it's operating in reverse bias. So we have the waveguide uh, and the slab here, and the green boxes are uh, the doping regions. So here I'm going to focus on the monitor, which is shown in yellow here. And this overlays the, the waveguide and the slab region. So if I click on Edit here, you can see that uh, this monitor will store the electron, the whole distribution, and automatically save the data into a dot .mat format that's uh, with its name. And at the same time, I'm also going to calculate the, the total charge, and um, the, the integrated total charge, which will give me the junction capacitance. And once the simulation is done, you'll see in the same directory uh, this mat file that contains all the information of the carrier density distribution. So let's move on to the optical simulation. So here I have the same waveguide geometry set up in mode solutions. And um, the waveguide and the slab here are just rectangular objects for now. So now I'm going to define the material for, uh, for this. So I'm going to click on the material database. I'm going to add an NP density material. And I'm going to call it silicon uh, with carriers. So here I can choose between using the Druid model or the Soraf and Bennett model for calculating the conversion between the carrier density to the refractive index. So here I can set the constants here, and I can also choose a base material. So I'm going to use silicon uh, as a base material, which means that the perturbation due to the carriers will be added on top of the silicon base material. So I'll click OK. And then all I have to do is add a grid attribute object. Uh, the NP density grid attribute object. I'm going to click on edit to change its properties and I'm going to click on import data and I'm going to browse to the mat file that was generated from the device simulation. So this file again will automatically appear once the device simulation is done. And once I do this I can now change the cathode index that I want to use and this will automatically apply the right voltage at the contacts it's going to use the right uh, refractive index. I can click OK. And here you can now see the uh, finite element mesh in purple here. And this is where the device simulation results are stored. So you can see that uh, the, there's finer mesh in the, in the region where the doping profile changes. And um, I'll show the mesh from the optical simulation as well. So that's the orange lines you see here. And this grid attribute will automatically interpolate the FEM, the finite element mesh results, onto the rectangular mesh for the optical simulation. So I can click Run. And before we run the simulation and calculate the modes, we can study the mesh structure. So if I plot the mesh structure here, at first it's hard to see where the change in refractive index is because it's so small. But uh, if I go ahead and change the color bar limits to uh, 3.47 to the maximum value, then you can see the perturbation uh, in the waveguide region due to the carriers. And then all I have to do is calculate the modes, and then I can get the effective index from which you can calculate the phase and the loss as a function of the applied voltage. So you can apply the same methodology uh, as my 2D example to uh, 3D active components such as this uh, interleaved microring structure. 
require do a 3D device simulation and take the results into a, a 3D optical simulation using FDTD solutions. And another example we have is the photonic crystal waveguide slab, which is based on um, the publication here from the Yokohama National University. And you can see um, you can see this in the full presentation of this video at the link here. Uh, please feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn as well to get um, access to insightful information of our products, services, and upcoming webinar information.